This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hello everybody! In today's video, let's talk about keyboards and random games. We'll be going through polling rate and chord splitting and how it affects games like Eterna, Osu Standard, Osu Mania and Quaver. But first, let's talk about polling rate. People make a big deal about polling rates for mice and report rates per second for tablets, but what about keyboards? Keyboard polling rate is probably the most neglected part of a gaming setup in general, with most websites claiming that you would never need a keyboard that pulls at 1000Hz and a 125Hz keyboard works just fine, which is true if you're just typing. But for rhythm games, it's a bit different. Plus, I'm pretty willing to bet that you, yes you, the person watching, is using a 125Hz keyboard right now. If you like the test, just open up also and turn up the size of the hit error bar to maybe 3 times scale or something big and play any map that's 250bpm or 125bpm. If your bar is doing something like this, your keyboard is 125Hz. But if it doesn't do that, it could be that your keyboard's polling rate is different from 125Hz. All the polling rate on your keyboard is inconsistent. If you're unfamiliar with what the hit error bar on Osu actually is, it's actually a timing input bar. So this bar shows your inputs throughout a map. So when you hit a note, you'll see a line on the bar. And what this line means is where your inputs sit on the timing window of that note. So every line is every key press, and the arrow above is the average timing of your hits. If the arrow or the lines moves to the right of the bar, it means that you're hitting too late. If it moves to the left, it means you're hitting too early. If you completely miss notes, it won't show on the bar at all. The colors also signify the hit result. Blue means 300, green means 100, and yellow means 50. So why did I guess your keyboard was 125Hz? Because 125Hz is the standard polling rate for USB devices. There are also keyboards with other polling rates like 100Hz or 75Hz, but those are rarer. So it's been a bit, but what is polling rate? USB peripherals such as mice or keyboards send information to your PC on a regular cycle. Think of every few milliseconds, your keyboard or mouse tells your PC what it's doing. If you're not touching your keyboard, it'll constantly update your PC with info that is doing nothing. And then when you press a key, the next time it cycles is when it sends your PC that you've pressed the key. This updating every few milliseconds is called polling. And polling rate is how many times a keyboard polls per second. The faster your keyboard polling rate is, the more times per second it updates your PC with information, which means the time between each update is smaller. For a keyboard with 125Hz polling rate, it can only send information to your PC every 8 milliseconds. For a 1000Hz keyboard, it sends information to your PC every 1 millisecond. So how does this affect rhythm games? Let's say you're playing anything on Osu, Mania or Eterna. What happens inside the keyboard is this graph. The white lines at the bottom is when the keyboard updates your PC, and let's say the red line is when you've pressed your key. But your key press is at a time when the keyboard hasn't pulled yet. So what your keyboard does is shift the input later because it only sends the input to your PC when it pulls. So this means that your input on a 125 polling rate keyboard can be 1 to 8 milliseconds later from when you've actually pressed the key. For the average computer user that doesn't game, 8 milliseconds is so small that it doesn't matter at all. But for rhythm gamers, it can be the difference between getting a 300 or 100, or the difference between getting a perfect or a great. Another thing about keyboards with polling rates like 75Hz, 100Hz and 125Hz is that they have these dead space BPMs. Whenever you play a map or a chart that has a BPM of the multiple of their polling rate, for example, if your keyboard is 125Hz and you play a 125 BPM map or a 250 BPM map, the hit error also will look like this, and the input graph for Eterna or Quaver will look like this. This is because the BPM lines up with the polling rate of the keyboard. The input's time to the BPM will all shift to these lines on the hit error. Here, it's a lot more obvious how keyboard polling rate changes whether you'll hit a 300 or 100. If your input is slightly later than the last line in the perfect window, the keyboard will send the input to the next line, which is in the great window. Inversely, this means that if you hit in the 100 window, it'll get sent to the 300 window. So in the end, the timing window is still the same on dead space BPMs. Except that offset should be plus 4 milliseconds now, since you're hitting later because the timing window has been shifted forward. As for non dead space BPM, the hit error or the input graph can look pretty normal. But even if the inputs look normal, each input is actually being sent 1 to 8 ms later than when you've actually pressed the key. Note that 1 to 8 milliseconds is for keyboards with 125 hertz polling rate. If your keyboard polling rate is higher, the latency is lower, and vice versa. Which is where there's a problem compared to dead space BPMs. Because now you don't know whether your keyboard is is going to be sending your input at 1 millisecond or 8 milliseconds later or something in between that. Which means that your hit window in the best case scenario will be the same as what it's supposed to be. But in the worst case scenario, it will be cut off at the end. Or you have the front of the hit window shifted to something bigger. Or the entire hit window is shifted 4 milliseconds later like in a dead space BPM. This extremely inconsistent hit window can affect gameplay because for some inputs, your 300s become 100s. Inversely, there are some 100s that become 300s. But for rhythm games, you really don't want to rely on luck with your hardware. Now that we've talked about how polling rate affects rhythm games with timing windows, I'll hand the next section to Senya because he knows Eterna and more VSRGs than I do, and he'll be talking about chord splitting. 
Since Sokaku has already explained polling rates, I'm going to cover what chord splitting is and how it can affect your play. Let's start with a basic definition of what chord splitting is exactly. Chord splitting is a phenomenon where multiple simultaneous keystroke inputs to the keyboard are not registered to the computer at the same time. This can be due to a couple different factors, both firmware and hardware side. Some keyboard firmwares, including QMK, only have the ability to send one keystroke per poll. That means if you press four keys simultaneously, the fastest that the keyboard could actually send the inputs would be three times the polling interval. On a 125Hz board, that means the delay between the first and last note could be as much as 24 milliseconds. Aside from firmware, the most common cause of low severity chord splitting seems to be something hardware side, maybe to do with the keyboard's construction, like poor soldering. I've also seen chord splitting that originates from the keyboard in question using hot swap sockets, though my sample size for this is literally only one, that being one of my own keyboards. Don't take this to mean that hot swap sockets universally result in chord splitting, though honestly I wouldn't be surprised if that's actually the case. At this point, you might be thinking, why does this all matter? Well, the problem of chord splitting is largely only applicable to VSRGs and not so much games like OSU Standard, because you really won't be sending more than one input at a time, and if you are, you probably aren't expecting good accuracy anyways. But in games like OSU Mania, BMS, or Eterna, chord splitting can make a pretty significant difference in the accuracy you're able to achieve depending on how severe it is. Imagine you're playing 7 key and hit a 7 note chord on time, but you get a 50, because your keyboard pulls at 125Hz and has to wait for a new pull cycle to send the next successive keystroke of the chord. By the 6th or 7th Pull, you're already outside the 100 window. As for 4 key, let's imagine a similar scenario. You hit a 4 note chord perfectly on time, but due to chord splitting, you don't get perfect judgments. Assuming we're using the same hypothetical keyboard, the delay in polling cycles is enough to kick the last note of the quad outside of the Judge 4 Marvelous window on Eterna and the Rainbow 300 window on Osu Mania. That's going to be rather frustrating when you're trying to add yourself to the list of 1 million point scores on Anemone, but can't hit quads perfectly. Of course, chord splitting this severe doesn't apply to all keyboards. Most of the gamer brand boards I've seen can send more than one keystroke per poll, and quite a few of them are also 1000 Hz. Some keyboards even split chords by only a couple of milliseconds. Is that really enough to make a difference? Well, for most people, it's not really going to be noticeable. For the vast majority of players, the amount of accuracy error in their play due to the limits of their own skill far outweighs any error that can be caused by the hardware they're using. But for the highest level of accuracy play, a few milliseconds can still mean losing points you should have had. This is most apparent in a turn a game with millisecond-based scoring. I'm not going to go into too much detail about how Eterna's wipe percent scoring works, but in short, your score is dependent on the precise timing of each individual note hit and doesn't rely on discrete windows for score calculation. For example, on Judge 4, a 22 millisecond hit and a 23 millisecond hit will be weighted approximately the same amount, despite the player receiving different judgments for each hit. Conversely, a 0 millisecond hit and one at 22 milliseconds will have very different point values despite both being in the Marvelous window. If you want a more in-depth explanation of wipe scoring, Mina's Eterna release post on FFR covers the fundamental concept of how it works, and Eddie N's video on Wife 3 explains how the current system differs from the original Wife scoring that was released in 2016. Polling rate has a large impact here as well. Playing on a 125Hz board makes getting a Wife quad significantly more difficult, since achieving that type of score generally requires all of your hits to be within a standard deviation of around 7 to 7.5 milliseconds. And low polling rate results in there being times when it's literally impossible to hit perfectly accurately, meaning the rest of your hits have to be even more on time to compensate. All Alright, so if you've been around the Eterna community for a while, you might have seen this spreadsheet before and wondered, what is it? So this whole thing started out of my frustration in trying to find information about keyboards that would be relevant to rhythm gamers. Manufacturers and peripheral companies, for some reason, like to leave out important details of other products in the marketing material, like polling rate. So it's often impossible to know what a keyboard's polling rate is without buying one to test in person. Since I don't have the kind of money to buy every relevant keyboard on the market, the next best thing I had access to was other players. Along with Foxfire667, a very high-level Eterna accuracy player, I started compiling a spreadsheet of keyboards with known polling rates and chord splitting properties. Before I get into how the information in the spreadsheet was gathered, I think it's worth mentioning that it's really only applicable to the highest level of accuracy players. The landing page of the spreadsheet states just this, that unless you're incredibly accurate or incredibly fast, buying a new keyboard probably isn't going to make you a better player. Now that that's out of the way, Eterna actually has several different features that have proven to be very useful in calculating the polling rate of a given keyboard. Replays can be saved online, and the Eterna online website allows users to view individual replays along with the millisecond offset of each note hit in the play. From this information, it's usually pretty easy to tell if there are any issues with low polling rate. 
Assuming you pick the right files, namely ones at 125 or 250 BPM, low polling rate will manifest itself as visual lines across the offset plot, similar to how stacked inputs in Dead Space show up on Osu's hit error indicator. The millisecond offset between each line gives the polling interval of the keyboard. Quartz splitting can sometimes be more difficult to diagnose, but it's still possible. Sometimes it's clear enough at face value, however most of the time, it can only be observed using the offset plot saved on EO for very high accuracy scores. And by very high accuracy, I mean very high accuracy. If the offset plot shows clear evidence of consistent splitting of chord inputs, we can take that to mean the keyboard, for one reason or another, cannot consistently send inputs simultaneously. From what Senya has gone through, if you're an accurate player, chord splitting on keyboards does matter. But what about polling rate? Does it matter in the end? In my opinion, for Osu, it definitely does on higher levels. But if you're playing lower level maps like 2 to 4 stars, it won't make too huge a difference. You can tell from this graph. This is the timing window for each OD level in Osu, D meaning overall difficulty, which is how tight the timing windows are. The higher the OD, the tighter the timing windows, and the harder it is to get a perfect. For example, it's plus minus 31.5 milliseconds for a 300 on OD8. What that means is that the timing window for a perfect on OD8 is 63 milliseconds, which is huge compared to the possible 8 milliseconds of latency a standard 125Hz keyboard has. On the other hand, OD10, the highest OD a mapper can set for a map, is plus minus 19.5 milliseconds for a perfect, which is not linear enough for keyboards with lower polling rates. And the thing about high level OSU standard is that OD10 is really common because if you're playing any map with OD8 and you slap on hard rock, the map's OD instantly becomes 10. And then it gets even worse because there is OD11. OD11 is the highest OD in OSU and only applies to the higher level maps with double time and hard rock. With a perfect timing window of plus minus 13.5 milliseconds, an 8 millisecond latency can start to affect accuracy by a lot. Although it can still boil down to player error when it comes to accuracy in OD11, it's really highly unlikely because of the timing window getting so small. And when it comes to OD11, you're pretty much playing HRDT and there's a lot more things you should be worried about in that case. Like, you know, AR11. So a simple way to put it is, with a 125Hz keyboard, OD9 almost becomes OD10 on a 1000Hz keyboard. So basically in conclusion, for higher levels, it's definitely a great deal to get a 1000Hz keyboard if you're playing harder maps with higher OD. But another thing to know is that accuracy doesn't matter on also standard as much as other rhythm games, you can set high PP plays without amazing accuracy. So whether it's worth getting a good keyboard for better accuracy plays is ultimately up to you. Although for Mania, I can see a slighter, bigger amount of people at the top who would need a 1000Hz keyboard as there is Rainbow 300 timing in this game. In Mania, Rainbow 300 timing is similar to OD10 on also standard, except a bit more strict. And Rainbow 300 timing is the same strictness no matter what OD map you're playing on Mania. So if you want to get the highest scores on Mania no matter what level you are at, more Rainbow 300s is better and that timing window doesn't really change. However, if you're not really good at Mania in the first place, getting a 1000Hz keyboard won't magically improve your accuracy. Generally, most gaming keyboards pull at 1000Hz, so there's nothing too much to worry about if your keyboard is a gaming one. However, if you're using a custom keyboard that's flashed with QMK, the keyboard on default will be 125Hz. Other regular keyboards are also 125Hz. Hertz, such as the Happy Hacking Keyboard and my Philco Magistash Keyboard. On the flip side, there are also other non-gaming keyboards that has a thousand hertz polling rate such as Vamilo's line of keyboards. So yeah, that's basically about it for the video. Keyboard quality matters when it comes to rhythm games. It can affect a lot if you're at the highest levels. I'd like to thank Senya for helping me out so much in this video and Atien for introducing me to him. I probably wouldn't be able to make most of this video without Senya's help. And by the way, there is one more thing I need to say about Osu, but it's at time. Hey kids, <coughs> I mean fellow doubts, you know the drill. Skillshare is an online learning community where you can join and learn almost anything you want. Whether you're a beginner or a pro, Skillshare has got you covered and has classes suited for your skill level. Now you can finally learn from the legendary Mr. Cool Teacher on how to write games for a children's game. <clears throat> I mean a game that adults like you and I love playing, I mean. Jokes aside, I recommend this class called Introduction to Arduino, Creating Interactive Projects by Mark Frenfelder. Long story short, you can write your own code onto an Arduino microcontroller and get to do almost anything you want. Like when I used an Arduino Micro to repurpose this 2DX controller to work on PC, and I made every single mistake in the book on this thing. Dot caught splitting that turns your rainbow 300s into 50s was bad? Check this out! But now with Skillshare, you can learn how to not do everything like how I did. Skillshare is a website specifically curated for learning, so that means there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes. And premium membership is less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So join Skillshare today! The first 1,000 people to click the link in my description will get a trial of premium membership. And now, back to the video. So there's an interesting thing about Osu that I discovered while working on this video. Apparently, the pool rate of Osu is the same as the game's frame rate. So it means that even if all your equipment is 1000Hz, it wouldn't matter in the end if your game can only run at 200fps or 100fps. 
I realized this was a thing when I set Osu to non full screen and 60 FPS. You can't set 60 FPS in Osu, but you can do that in the user config text file in the game folder. So I locked it at 60 FPS and played a 120 BPM map, and it did the same dead space thing as it did for keyboards. So it means that even though my keyboard I was using was 1000 Hz, it was sending inputs at 60 Hz basically. So that's one thing to note. It wouldn't matter in the end if your computer or laptop can't run Osu at over 1000 frames per second. Another thing someone on Twitter pointed out to me was about debounce on key switches on keyboards. I'm not completely sure about debounce and such, but I know that debounce and chattering on keyboards can cause your inputs to basically double press, which is pretty bad for rhythm games or most games in general, I imagine. I heard that Vamilo, Ducky, and Osu keypads are likely to do this. Well, not likely, but they might do it. And I do remember a friend back then telling me about how their Ducky keyboards that they keep buying for some reason always chatter. But I'm not completely sure about this, and if there's anything I got wrong in this video, please let me know in the comments, and all the relevant things will be linked in the description. And also, there is a way to flash your custom keyboard from 125Hz to 1000Hz, and that will also be linked in the description. I haven't made the video on that yet, but it'll be up on my second channel, so please watch out for it, and thank you for watching.